This is the story of a tragedy within a tragedy. Within days of the December 7, 1941 Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, Washington ordered a hasty investigation that blamed the attack on just two men. These men were the Army and Navy commanders in Hawaii, General Walter Short and Admiral Husband Kimmel. Humiliated, ridiculed, and demoted, these two men shouldered the pain of an entire nation. But over seven decades, the real story has emerged. The truth has led military men, Pearl Harbor survivors, and even the United States Congress to fight for the restoration of Short and Kimmel's rank. This is the truth of Pearl Harbor. These are the facts of a real tragedy. This is the story of Admiral Kimmel. Frank Knox, Secretary of the Navy in 1941, originally reported that Admiral Kimmel had not been alerted to a possible Japanese attack on Hawaii, but changed his wording to the report that the Admiral Kimmel was not alert to a possible Japanese attack. This latter wording was widely reported and again perpetuated the misinformation about Pearl Harbor. The research of Michael Gannon, Professor Emeritus at the University of Florida and author of Pearl Harbor Betrayed, sets the record straight. In 1981, historian Gordon W. Prang published a book entitled At Dawn We Slept. He leaves the impression uh, throughout his book that indeed uh, the Navy at Pearl Harbor was asleep or on liberty and no one was on alert and other historians since have carried forward that theme as a way to condemn Admiral Kimmel for dereliction of duty in failing to maintain an adequate state of readiness. But the documents reveal and uh, again, we have a case where historians have assumed what documents might say, but they have not searched for, found, or used the documents themselves, which I did. The documents show that 85 to 95 percent of the enlisted ranks were on board the battleships, cruisers, and destroyers in Pearl Harbor on the morning of December 7, 1941. That highest number, 95, represents the, the battleship fleet. And uh, you couldn't get a, a higher uh, rating uh, for a time of, of, of readiness because there were some uh, enlisted men who were on duty ashore, some were on liberty, but uh, Admiral Kimmel had given orders for uh, strict vigilance and for maintaining a sufficient number of men on board to fight the ship, that is, to get it underway, uh, use all of its guns, and uh, particularly to answer properly an air attack with ready machine guns and other anti-aircraft weaponry. At 0755, just before the Japanese attacked that Sunday morning, the forenoon watch was relieving the morning watch and the decks were alive with men. The engine rooms were uh, beehives of activity. And uh, it, it, it was just plain wrong for any historian, starting with Gordon Prang, who started this rumor, to maintain that the enlisted men and the officers on board these ships were um, negligent or derelict or asleep at the switch. After November 27, when the Navy Department sent to Admiral Kimmel what was popularly called a war warning, Admiral Kimmel directed that all ship's personnel exercise extreme vigilance. Certain guns were be to, ma to be manned day and night with ammo at the guns. Now that was directly contrary to Navy regulations, which specified that ammunition was to be kept below decks, never on deck. But Admiral Kimmel disobeyed that rec uh, regulation. And he had, as was commonly said, ammo, ammunition at the guns. And as a matter of fact, 
So quick were those guns to fire against the attacking Japanese aircraft that the admiral commanding the Japanese fleet, Admiral Nagumo Chuichi, said the following in his after action report. The enemy's anti-aircraft fire reaction had been so prompt as virtually to nullify the advantage of surprise, end quote. Now, the Japanese witness is our best witness that Admiral Kimmel, instead of being derelict in his state of readiness, was absolutely on the mark. And this charge is one that does not survive examination of the actual documents. Another sign of Admiral Kimmel's readiness is an incident involving the U.S. destroyer USS Ward off the entrance to Pearl. The order had been given contrary to orders from the Chief of Naval Operations in Washington. The order had been given by Admiral Kimmel for all destroyers encountering a submarine, either full size or midget, to attack that submarine at once. And that's what the ward did when it sighted uh, the conning tower of a midget submarine just off the entrance into Pearl. And it, uh, together with a PBY-5 aircraft, sank that submarine. If Admiral Kimmel had followed the directives of the Chief of Naval Operations, that submarine would have made its way into the harbor and done, we suppose, serious damage. But it was caught off the channel entrance and sunk because of Admiral Kimmel's foresight and willingness to disobey what he thought were unsubstantial and erroneous orders. Help right a wrong and 70 years of injustice. Urge the president to act now and restore the ranks of Admiral Kimmel and General Short.